Now, it's George Owens on GCR, Genesis Christian Radio, bringing light out of the darkness. GCR, Genesis Christian Radio. Hi, it's George here with you once again, and welcome to Genesis Christian Radio Stroke TV. And my guest this evening is my good old pal, Barry Barnett. Barry, how you doing, my friend? Oh, it's great to be here, George. Great to see, to see you, you again, really. And uh, we always have a good time together and good fellowship. Thank you. We do. Uh, now, if I had to say that Barry, you can tell right away he's not from uh, the best <laughs> land at, at all in the world, uh, Bonnie, Scotland. Uh, he's actually a Londoner, but we won't hold that against him. <laughs> but he's a Londoner who's now in Israel and in yes. Jerusalem. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, we have a story to tell you tonight, dear listener, dear friend, uh, dear viewer. Honestly, this is going to be great. Barry, uh, we go back um, many, many years now. We yeah. met when you were first doing in, um, Jews for Jesus. That's right. And you used to come up here and, and yep. go around the churches and, and That's uh, right. tell us all about your, your missionary work, really, yes. that you were doing then. But Let's let's go way back because okay. I see you're, you're from London or uh, London anyway. You're a Londoner. Um, do you do you speak the language there? Do you? Uh, where are you born? In the the, the sound of the the bells. <laughs> well, my <laughs> grandfather was a Cockney. Yeah, he had all the sort of all right, get off me barra and all that. <laughs> and so he grew up in the tough east end of London. And his father was a Jewish immigrant from Lithuania, oh, and right. came over before 1900 mm -hmm. uh, and he escaped the horrible pogroms, the persecution yeah. uh, of Jews, the anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe. So that's how, how they got there. And then um, settling in London, my grandfather had nine brothers and sisters. <laughs> wow. And they were all trying to work on the markets and make some money, look after each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Um, yeah, and then I, it came to me. I was born, yeah, a while ago. <laughs> I won't give away my age. <laughs> there we I go. Still a boy, still a boy. <laughs> At heart. Now, would you then have been born into a Jewish family? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So my, my mother was actually a Holocaust survivor. Really? Yeah. So she escaped the Nazis when she was just four years old on what was called the kinder transport or the children's transport. Yeah. So she was four years old, 1939. She came across on a train and boat and was rescued by Britain. So I thank God oh, I and you. I thank Britain. Um, so I grew up absolutely knowing what anti-Semitism was yeah. and uh, knowing how, how grateful mm -hmm. I was that my mum was alive. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in a liberal Jewish family, George, which, mm -hmm. <laughs> which actually meant that I did actually eat bacon <laughs> <laughs> um, very liberal we didn't keep to all the laws of Moses but we did celebrate the Jewish festivals mm -hmm. on Passover and Tabernacles and Hanukkah and Purim that Feast of Esther yeah. we had a great time and we always knew our Jewish identity was really important mm -hmm. but I didn't really know who God was God was this uh, vague kind of incredible God, who was distant and mm. unknowable almost, you know, yeah. but we yeah. knew the laws. And uh, as I say, we kept some of them. We kept the Ten Commandments pretty much so, but not all the food laws. Yeah. You know, I remember Joan thinking, we're going to give Barry uh, rolls and bacon. Oh, <laughs> like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> and Barry said, oh, yes, please, you can, you can. <laughs> well, I have to say, since Jesus has come and he's the Messiah and I know him, yeah. I'm so grateful because I, I believe that he fulfilled the food laws. So I can eat bacon without guilt now, which is brilliant. <laughs> oh, of course. Now, that, that, that's a, a very rare thing for non-Jewish people to hear you saying, yeah. you know, the very fact that when you came to, to you know, you, you came to you know Yeshua yeah. Yeah. as the Messiah. How, how did that happen? Oh, George, it was the most wonderful thing. Uh, there was a bit of a long process. So... Mm -hmm. um, I went through a crisis earlier on in life where I was married before my present marriage, so my first marriage, and it, it wasn't working out. It was so painful. We couldn't have children. Uh, we were going different ways. It was just 
unbelievably painful. And in that sadness and, and pain, I was searching. I was searching for God. Uh, and as a Jew, I first thought, well, what about the synagogue? Because I'd grown up, you know, going mm -hmm. to synagogue fairly regularly, maybe once every two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And it was all very lovely, beautiful community. All us Jews stick together, look after each other. But I didn't think God was actually there that I could know him and talk to him. It, we, we, Jewish people definitely pray the set prayers in Hebrew, mm -hmm. pretty much from the Psalms, actually, yeah. uh, and many other prayers in Hebrew to God. But mm -hmm. we don't know him personally. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, well, where shall I go? And uh, I was in a real mess. And my, and my first wife, who was a Christian, but kind of sort of backsliding, and she suggested we go to a church. She had faith. Mm -hmm. So we ended up in a church. And you know what, George? I was amazed by the people in the church worshipping this. And I couldn't say his name. I couldn't say Jesus' name at that point because Jewish people, oh, we don't talk so about no, no. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is because of all the horrible history of Christian anti-Semitism throughout the ages. So Jewish people are very wary of Christianity and Jesus um, and are afraid of conversion. Jewish people yeah. think that you leave Judaism mm -hmm. um, when you come to faith in Jesus. Of course, you don't. Mm -hmm. A Jewish person completes them. Their Judaism becomes a, a Christian, but also a Messianic Jew. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I was in this church and all these people love Jesus. And I was really impressed. And I, I didn't I didn't know what to do. So I said, oh, can I find out more? And they said, well, come and do an alpha course. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, George, that, you know, the alpha course and yep. many yep. people will know mm -hmm. it. And what a blessing the Alpha course was for me because I got a free meal every Thursday. <laughs> but more than that, more than that, <laughs> I actually got to say words and ask questions that I'd, I'd never got to say in my life. I'd always been wondering, well, who is this Jesus? Mm -hmm. Did he really rise from the dead or did his disciples steal his body and yeah. claim he rose from the dead mm -hmm. and that's what I believe that's yeah. what many Jews believe and it says in Matthew 28 in the in the gospel that that is the lie that was spread throughout that's the right. community yeah, it's still very spread. much it's still spread 2000 years yeah. later George. so yeah. I asked all these questions and I was really getting to kind of try and find answers and then we had the alpha day of prayer and this was a an, an amazing moment for me when God met me um Somebody prayed for me and laid their hands on me, which we don't do in the Jewish culture. Mm. You know, this was unusual. Mm -hmm. And I felt this peace and joy, it's incredible, which was incredible. Actually. I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what the Holy Spirit was, but I knew it was real. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to find out more. So then I started to read the New Testament. And this is a forbidden book for us Jews. So I was, you know, quite apprehensive. I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm reading a forbidden book. And. It's a Jewish book. Matthew's all about Jews and it's written by Jews. That's Most right. of the, the, the books are written by Jews. And I felt at home and um, I just knew as I'm reading that either Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah or this is the biggest lie in history. It's one or the other. Mm -hmm. And you can't sit on the fence. And I was, um, I was amazed. I just knew he is the Messiah. My heart was warming. But I couldn't, I couldn't go forward because I was afraid that I would convert and leave my Jewish people behind and become something else, a Christian. And I would be called a traitor. And sadly, this is what um, Messianic Jews or Jewish Christians are sometimes called yeah. traitors to the Jewish people. So I was very afraid. And then at the, on the Alpha course, a, uh, a nice Christian gave me a testimony by a lady called Helen Shapiro. Yeah, Helen Shapiro. Who some yeah. people would have heard of. Yeah. She was a, yeah. a, She's a singer. lovely lady. Oh, yeah, you, you remember. Yeah. She was a big singer. And she had the same fear that she would be betraying her people. And she was reassured by, by lovely Gentile Christians, like yourself, George, <laughs> that um, you're still Jewish when you believe in Jesus. And that is the truth. And that is the message to give to our wonderful Jewish people, my wonderful Jewish people, you're yeah. still Jewish when you believe in Jesus. Because after all, Jesus was Jewish yeah. and the first 12 disciples were Jewish and they never stopped being Jewish. They That's became right. Jewish Christians, or right. Messianic Jews. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard that, my heart was free and I, I, I said sorry for my sins and gave my life to Yeshua. Wow. And uh, praise the Lord Jesus. I'm so happy oh, sharing it. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. And to know that, and, and, and you know, and I love the very fact that I'm not a Jew, but I'm grafted in. Amen. Brother. And I think, wow, you know, we are allowed as Gentiles yeah. to become part 
of God's family. And I don't know about you, but that blows me away. Uh, that we, and so one glad. day, and we so pray glad. in here every Tuesday in Law Christian Fellowship, we pray at the end of our time, we pray, Lord, please, please, please take the blindfold from the people yeah. in Israel that they might see Jesus for who he really is. Thank you, brother. Amen. He is the Messiah. Amen. He's been and he's coming back. <laughs> he's coming back for his church. Hallelujah. And uh, we, we need to be excited about all these things because we have a yeah. tremendous God yeah. uh, who loves us so, so much. Do you know, if I may say, yeah, what, sure. what you said is absolutely right, that you're grafted in, which is Romans yeah. 11, grafted yeah, into the other right. But even more amazing than that, in Ephesians, mm -hmm. it says, uh, Paul describes how the mystery is that Gentiles have come into the kingdom and inherited inherited what the jews have inherited that's so right. your heritage is my heritage and what's fantastic is all those wonderful jewish biblical feasts mm. which were denied the church by constantine in the fourth century he cut out all the jewish festivals all the jewish roots everything we're putting that back in and yeah. so messianic jews and christians gentile christians can enjoy festivals like passover and I know that you've invited we, me to share the Passover, me and my wife, with you guys yeah, several can, times. Yeah, and we, we uh, I know you were, you did one last night in yes, Elgin. Yes, we did. Uh, and uh, ordinarily we would have Barry and Alison with us, but Passover this year is that wee bit later. So we're having ours in a couple of weeks' time. Fabulous. And you'll be way back to yeah, Israel again. But it, it's by so then. good. But, but you know, the, the very fact that we celebrate that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. we do it with great yeah. gusto. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, it's fantastic. And we, this man actually taught us how to dance. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if, you, if you go into the Law Christian Fellowship uh, webpage, you'll see us all out in the car park dancing, <laughs> uh, being led by Barry. You were very good. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm quick learners. <laughs> quick learners. Quick yeah. learners. That yeah. was a lot of fun. It because was. that's a lo another lovely Jewish tradition that was cut out of the church that. Of, of dancing yeah. and praising the Lord. <coughs> so it says in the Psalms, let them praise his name with singing and dancing. Hallelujah. David danced before the Lord David as well. Danced. And God. communal dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, there are many churches who dance, individually maybe, but the communal dancing oh, is something special. It's beautiful. You're all in a circle and, and oh, I feel like teaching it again. <laughs> maybe tomorrow, Jude. Well, you never know. <laughs> tomorrow, uh, Barry and Alison will be with us uh, tomorrow at our service, and we're looking forward to that. Um, now, yeah, I know though uh, you, you then you were you're born again. Hallelujah! Uh, you're following the Lord Jesus Christ. You've met Alison, yes, my lovely wife, and you're married, and the two of them work together in yes. Jews for Jesus. Yes, uh, and you were over in Israel. Yes, you were over there a few times. Yes, but oh dear, <laughs> <laughs> oh what happened to Barry? <laughs> right. Well, me and my lovely wife Alison, who God brought to me and God put us together, which is wonderful. Uh, yeah, we were on a campaign in Israel, giving out leaflets about Jesus, an evangelistic campaign, and we were holding banners. And I was one day at a, a busy intersection near Be'er Sheva, which is one of the main towns in the south of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and suddenly a van turned up with six immigration officials and they started uh, interviewing us. And we were like, what's going on? This has never happened before. Mm -hmm. And the other three in my team had... IDs for Israel so the Israeli IDs they let them go but me here was uh, I was uh, arrested <laughs> mm -hmm. they claimed I was doing something illegal which I wasn't mm -hmm. and they took me to be interrogated and they kept claiming that this was illegal and it was horrible really they mm -hmm. were quite nasty and uh, I understand what they were doing because these were my brothers the Jews but these were the Orthodox Jews who wear the kippah, the small hat on your head, as a sign of respect for God. And they did not want to see the gospel spread. They really believed that Jesus isn't the Messiah and they didn't want to see it spread. So they were very angry and they felt very threatened that this was a threat to Judaism. Uh, so they took their anger out on me. And then eventually, after a few hours, they bundled me into a van <laughs> and they took me to a prison. <laughs> And I had four days in an Israeli prison, uh, which wasn't very nice, but God looked after me. And I have to say, George, in the prison, being a mature Christian, the first thing I did was panic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have prayed, but I was panicking. And then eventually I prayed, <laughs> and the Lord really looked after me. And there were 10 Christians in the prison out of 60 
prisoners in, mm. in our unit. Mm. And everybody was a visa case, you know. Yeah. They claimed that, that people were working illegally or had mm. entered the country illegally or overstayed their visa, things like that. And it was it was pretty horrible, but God, God looked after me. And I can tell you, he got me working there. I was able pretty to sure. share the gospel with a few people in the cell I was in. Uh, the Christians gave me a Bible with a, a split language Bible. So there were oh. five languages, which was quite interesting. Oh, yeah, there was interesting, like, yeah. yeah, English, Hebrew, Arabic, Russian and French. And in my cell, there was a Russian, a French guy, uh, well, an Ivory Coast guy who speaks French and an Arab guy and someone speaking English and Hebrew, another one. And it was just great. I was able to share the gospel with the people in, in my in my uh, cell when sure. I calmed down a bit. <laughs> and, and so the Lord kept me busy and yeah. uh, and he got me out. Sometimes you can be mm. there waiting to be heard, your case to be heard for weeks or yeah. months, yeah. Uh, which would have been pretty scary for me. So the God, so God got me out after four days. Mm -hmm. uh, thank God. And, and a uh, whole load of people yeah. all over the world. Yeah, we went to prayer. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, but that all was over the, the world. Most important yeah. people, good people Pray. like yourselves, and and thousands of people were yep. praying for me, and I could feel their prayers. And my wife told me there's people praying for you all over the world, thousands. And I just burst into tears uh, with relief because I knew once people were praying, mm -hmm. then uh, I'm safe. I'm safe. So uh, God, thanks so to the good. Lord for for him, him rescuing me, and also for the people praying. It was mm -hmm. just brilliant. But I was told you're out on bail and you have to leave the country in one week or we'll rearrest you. So I left the country. <laughs> but so, uh, sh shall I carry on the story, George? Yeah, or? please do. Yeah. Yeah. So we fought a whole court case. <coughs> Jews for Jesus uh, paid for the very expensive court case and it went to the lower courts. They threw it out. They didn't want to touch it. It went to the Supreme Court of Israel in Jerusalem. Wow. And on the day of my hearing, they did a deal before the hearing. So what happened was the court said, we don't want to fight the government on this because the, you know, the government mm. and the courts were mm -hmm. sort of arguing. So the government have offered you to come back to Israel for two weeks only. And then after that, you have to, you'll have to seek permission every time, which of course they're not going to give because they don't want the gospel spread. Uh, the government doesn't want that. So we lost, we lost. And uh, we, we, we didn't know what to do. So me and my wife prayed, you know, we said, Lord, you've called us to Israel, but I can only go for two weeks. So the Lord said, go for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, as it does. <laughs> as, you know, it's pretty clear. As it does, and yeah. in that time, we met new lawyers who were believers. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, yes, we'll get you in. First, we'll get your wife's citizenship. Uh, it'll be a court case. It'll be expensive. And then we'll get you in as her husband. It'll be a court case. It'll be expensive. Yeah. But wh why would you want to go back there? Yes. So desperately. Yeah. There must have been a purpose. Thanks. What, what was the purpose? Well, God called us a long time ago That's to bring the gospel to our Jewish people. Yeah. And then he added that, and to the Arabs that you need. And that's yeah. that's the belter. Yeah. That, yeah. Please tell us about this. But what, what yeah. was the what was the vision that God gave? So you God gave us the vision from Ephesians two, actually, yeah. uh, of the one new people or the one new man it's often called. So mm -hmm. the vision is for us to start a congregation in Jerusalem for Jews and Arabs together to worship Jesus. Wow. Yeah, which is huge. Now, for people in Scotland, that's like going into Glasgow and saying, I'm going to start a church with Rangers and Celtic supporters <laughs> worshipping together. Yeah. And, and in our eyes, Barry, and I'm sure it's the same with yourselves and the people in Israel, yeah. when you tell them, Arab and Jew worship, and oof, surely that can't happen. Yeah, absolutely. They don't think it'll work. But God. But God. You know? But God. <laughs> you know, that's absolutely right, George, spot on, because there are many Christian Arab churches mm -hmm. in Jerusalem and in the country, and there are many Messianic Jewish fellowships, they're called, yeah. in yeah. Jerusalem and the country, but very few which are mixed. There are some in the together. north. In uh -huh. Haifa, ah, but right. we do not know of any in Jerusalem. So wow. we're very excited, so very nervous. The Lord has given you a tremendous he gave, task. Yeah, he gave us a task. Now, I, I want you, please, dear viewer, dear listener, keep that in the back of your mind because we're going to be going through some stuff here and you think, wow, is God really in this? Yeah, yeah. That's right. And the outcome that's will blow you right. away, believe you me. Praise God. Please carry on. The, the Lord has given you this vision. Yes. You're trying to get back in yes. to Israel. Yep. 
And Can't they're just in. putting the barriers up all the time. Barrier after barrier. So the lawyers said, don't worry, you know, we'll get you in, we'll get Alison in first, then you uh, just read through this and sign here. Now, Alison, my wife, reads really quickly, so she read through, got to the end, and she went, <gasps> and I thought, what's, she, what's all that about? So I read through, I got to the end, I went, <gasps> because it was £20,000. Oh. No, dollars, sorry. Dollars. dollars. Oh. <laughs> so like 15,000 pounds. Yeah. And we were like, we haven't got it. And you know those moments in life, George, where you just do something a little crazy, but you know it's the right thing to do because God is telling you, even though it seems ridiculous. So we found ourselves signing on the yeah. dotted line. <laughs> even though we didn't have no we anywhere near that amount, but God brought it in. That's faith, though. Yeah, we had to trust him. And um, yeah. he taught us to trust in God, brought the money in. Not all of it at once. He didn't need to. But no, what but we needed it. As, as and when. Yeah. And, and this is what a lot of people, I, I find, Barry, and I'm sure you'll agree yeah. when we hear that, that people say, you trust in God and these things happen. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. But you've got to take that first stumbling yeah. step first, haven't you? Absolutely. And the thing is, that he then meets you in that. Barry's, Barry and Alison both are saying, I'm going to sign this in faith, <laughs> right? That God's going to provide. Yeah. And the Lord says, yeah, that's okay, but I want to see you take that first step. Yeah. And that can be really difficult because you're really trusting. Really hard. And then when you do it, you think, wow. Yeah. And th the next step becomes easier. Yeah. And then it just before you know it, you're off and running. Yeah. Except the next step became harder. <laughs> <laughs> because God said to me, okay, give me all your savings. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's not that much, Lord. Give it to me. But it's emergency money, Lord. Please give it to me. Oh, Lord, okay. And I fought him all the way to the bank. <laughs> but once I'd given my savings over to the cause and God said yeah. it, then I had peace, complete that's peace. It. And that that's peace it. you cannot buy. That peace is from God. That peace is a bit from obedience to God. And Amen. I'm still learning that, to be honest. We all are, yeah, believe all me. Are. But but the thing yeah. is, though, um, how long did it take? Yeah. Because Alison's out there already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's there. Yeah. Everything's hunky dory. Yeah. To the best it can be. Her husband's in London. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. No, I'm sure she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> she might have done. <laughs> but how long did yeah. it take, Barry? So, oh my goodness, we were actually three and a half years apart, which wow. was really hard. The first year was really hard. Oh, of course. We've been married 17 years now, which is great. Yeah. But I was really painful. But God mm. was with me. He was teaching yeah. me to depend on Him, and He was mm -hmm. teaching Alison to be bold and go out uh, and and talk to people about Jesus. Yeah. So it took a while. So Alison went 15 times, George, to the Ministry of Interior. 15 visits every few weeks. It took a year and a half mm -hmm. for the application. And then finally they made a decision and they said, no, you've done the wrong application. Start again. After a year and a half wow. of yeah. wasting her time. But it was not, nothing's ever wasted, George. No, well, that's nothing's true. Ever wasted. She got to share the gospel with people in the Ministry that's, of Interior. That's the thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. And with people who were waiting and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we started again. We were really depressed and fed up, but we trusted that God just wanted us to do it. So we started again. This time I applied in my own right as a Jew through my Jewish father. Mm -hmm. um, and we just waited. And the lawyer said it will be a big court. It'll be a big um, wait, but a court case. But we'll get you in. And then without a court case. They gave me citizenship, the Israeli and the Israeli government, which was such a miracle. We cannot work out. There is no way we can work out how it happened. And, mm -hmm. and God must have just closed the eyes of the officials or, or just, yeah. Yeah. Um, just got it through. And suddenly, beginning of 2023, I got Israeli citizenship and I was so happy. And here's the best bit, George. I flew a month later to Israel. Mm -hmm. um, and when a Jew gets Israeli citizenship, to come to Israel, mm -hmm. they give you the first flight for free. They fly you there. Ah. <laughs> so the country that had arrested me, imprisoned me, <laughs> threw, me out, <laughs> threw me back in at their expense. <laughs> That's only God. Only with, God. Oh, yeah. With, with open arms. <laughs> only God. Absolutely. But uh, the thing is, yes. du during this time as well, uh, this period of three and a half years, yes. remember, away yes. from your, your lovely lady oh. wife, Alan, Alison, who's yes. still in Israel, yes. and you're here, yes. and you're still going round yes. faithfully, yes. going round the, the, the people who support 
their ministry. Praise God. Uh, and Barry's been coming to, to stay with John and I for oh, yes. more years than I can remember. <laughs> uh, and it's about 10 or 15 years. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit now, yeah. But uh, this particular time, you were you came on a Wednesday. Yes. Uh, you were staying Sunday. overnight, and then you were going up north for yeah. a week. Yeah. You were coming back the following Wednesday, yeah. oh, and he was going to be with us till the Sunday. Yes. And you were speaking at the church, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. I'll never forget that night, Barry, yeah. because the first Wednesday you came to stay over, and we were, we were having our meal. Well, you just stopped mid-meal and you said, I've got something I need to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it really devastated us yeah. because this man, this brother in Christ, whom we love dearly, gave us really shattering news that he'd been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Yes. Uh, the tears, as you can imagine, uh, were, were flowing that, that night. Yeah. And we sat and we cried and we hugged. Yeah, we did. Uh, and after we blew our nose and stuff and mm. and things kind of calmed down, but you then said, but George and Joan, yeah. the Lord has told me he's going to heal me. Amen. Hallelujah. And and I was given it, praise be to God. And yeah. we, and, and as we were in that, that moment and, and we made a pact yes. with Barry and we said, we will stand with you in yeah. this. And you did. And, and our church Absolutely. would stand with you yeah. in this. And we did. I'll never forget if I may interrupt there, George. No, please do. Your friendship was so precious at that moment. I really, really felt your love and that you stood with me. And, oh, my goodness, you were so good to me. And George even carved a beautiful little wooden um, uh, word. Uh, what would you call it? An ornament. It's a yeah. plaque. A plaque, yeah, a, plaque. a wooden plaque. That's, it. That's the word. And on it, the word was faith. And he painted it red. And I held that with me and took it to Israel. And it's on my mantelpiece in Jerusalem. Good book. life. <laughs> but it was a symbol that God yeah. has promised yeah. and did promise to heal me and, um, and, that, you, and that you were standing with me in our yeah. sin. So um, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. We give praise to and God because, yeah, because the thing is, though, that he'd already been diagnosed. Yeah. You were going through treatment yeah. and then they were finding more. Oh, yeah. And it more. got worse. <laughs> and we're thinking, oh, yeah. Lord, no, no, we're standing on right. this, Lord. You've told Barry, you've given him a job to do. Yeah. You're going to get him to Israel. Yeah. And somehow or other, Lord, he's yeah. going to be cancer-free. Oh, I'll tell you, I and, give, yeah, I give wow. all praise to the Lord. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It was because, scary. I yeah. went from stage three cancer to stage four, which mm -hmm. is the really serious yeah. terminal cancer. And I had the, the conversation with the doctor. But all the time I knew, and in my heart, I believed that God would heal me. I had a few wobbly moments. I'm not a yeah, perfect yeah, yeah. faith Christian, but I knew I knew that God had said he would heal me, and he keeps his promises. He does. He? He so does. here we are. The cancer is now spreading a little bit to my lungs, a little bit to my bones, quite a bit in my liver, and my lymph system, and the doctors are all worried and the doctors start to give me this this new drug i had three sets of drugs it's called immunotherapy which is kind mm. of much lighter treatment than chemotherapy so yeah. i didn't have all the horrible side yeah. effects which was good yeah. Yeah. and they gave me this new drug and it was only supposed to contain the cancer because the doctors had given up mm -hmm. but yeah. i hadn't given up and god never gives up no and this was the amazing moment george after mm -hmm. taking these drugs god used these drugs for a while and for a while and then i went for my next scan and the doctor said, this is remarkable, Mr. Barnett, because here's your previous three-month scan. The cancer's everywhere in your liver. And here's the new scan. It's gone, except for a little bit left. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor was, this is very surprising. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, and the radiologist says it's very good and surprising too. You see, they couldn't say it's a miracle. No, I, <laughs> I kept saying, it's, it's a, a miracle. miracle. And I knew yeah. God would do it. And he did it. God mm -hmm. did a miracle. And he even gave Alison and myself um, the, the, the wonderful um, passage in the Bible, Ezekiel 37, where the dry bones rise up yeah. and become alive again. And he said, this is a picture. What's what I did in your life, Barry, I've given you, you new life. It's a picture for Israel. And I want you to share it with people in Israel that mm -hmm. the dry bones will rise. Mm -hmm. uh, he also gave us John 11, which uh, is the raising of Lazarus from the dead. But the bit just before that, Jesus says this uh, will not result in death when they tell him that Lazarus is ill. And that was what I, hang on, I hung on to because God had promised. 
And I give him all the glory and oh, praise. Amen. Me amen. Another chance, really. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And, you know, we're, we're, we're with Barry and Alison. We're praying for them every Tuesday night in our prayer meeting. We pray for them every single Thank day. Uh, and they're out there. And we're thinking, Barry's out there. The Lord has got him to where he wants him to be. Yeah. Is he going to be okay? Hmm. And we're still praying, praying, praying. And it's only about two months ago yeah. that you contacted me on WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah. You remember that message? I do. Yeah. I do. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he contacted me and he said, George, I've just had my uh, last checkup yeah. and I'm yeah. cancer free. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a God we Hallelujah. serve. Hallelujah. That's you know, the God we have. That that dance that you taught us out in the car park, yes. I was doing around my sitting room. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we can God celebrate. is just so good. Just so good. God is and, just amazing. I'm so grateful. And I remember when you told me that and you said, and I said, you know, I'm actually going to be doing a program on weddings. It was a Tuesday. Yeah. And you said, you've got my permission to tell my testimony, yes. Yes. which I did. And I looked out a piece of music. I, by New Desire, a, 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 an American family uh, who sing. Uh, and they, they sing a wonderful song called You're Looking at a Miracle. And I said, that's Barry. Yeah. Uh, because the lady of the family who sings this song, she was suffering um, grand mal seizures, yeah. as many as eight a day. Now, I've worked with people who have had one a day and it just wipes them out for the rest of the day. She was having it constantly throughout the day and God healed her. Wow. And she, she put pen to paper and uh, we'll, we'll include this in the interview as well. Wow. We'll make that, that piece of music Praise being God. brought in because it's a miracle this man is here with us tonight. Praise be to Praise God. Praise God. I love the song. Thank yeah, you. yeah, it's a pleasure, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Now, what yeah. about Barry and, yes. and Alison? Yeah. What, what when you guys go back? Yes. Uh, what what's the what's the, the immediate plans? Yeah. The middle and the, the long term. What what's what's the setup? Well, the first thing to say, George, is you may well be aware, of course, that there is a horrible war yeah. in Israel, yeah. and um, and we were caught up in it. Um, uh, we will never forget October the seventh. The whole mm. world will never yeah. forget October the seventh, mm -hmm. and we were in Jerusalem. And um, there were rockets heading towards us, and we had to, we just had to get to the safe room in our Jerusalem yeah. flat, where the reinforced room to be mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. I must admit, the first siren to warn us went off at six o'clock, and I slept through it. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did really. And then the next one went off fifteen minutes later, and we both uh, were from we off. in that, that room mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty scary for the first week. There were rockets yeah. coming to Jerusalem. Then it eased off. Uh, and there were no rockets for a while, and then rockets came back, and then none for two or three months. So it's not been too bad for us in Jerusalem, but we've spent a lot of time just praying for our mm. Arab and Jewish friends. Of course. Um, and of course. the tension is so, mm. so tense. You, you can't get away from it. And, of mm. course, the mm. pictures of the hostages are everywhere, posters of, of them everywhere. And, of course. of course, that's good because we can think and pray for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it does mean we're carrying that burden and, All and, the time. and trying to give it to God, of course, giving it to God. So God's wonderful. He's been really blessing us with peace as we can bless others and reassure yeah. them. And people are yeah. searching for God. Mm -hmm. And we're really praying for our Arab and Jewish friends. We have Arab friends who have cousins in Gaza, mm -hmm. and we all know that the Gazans are starving. They really need food aid. But, mm -hmm. well, we won't go into the details, but so many things are going wrong, they're not getting the food aid. Mm -hmm. and, and so many people being blamed. But the fact is they're not getting the food aid. So we're really praying for them, and I hope they are getting it. I think yeah, of course. They have of course. Getting it. And then we pray for our Jewish friends, in my Hebrew study course, the teachers have sons in Gaza, in the army, mm. and they don't know what happens to them because for two weeks they're out of any contact by mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. So they're really anxious and we're really yeah. praying for them yeah, and giving them hugs. So we're supporting as much as we can. So it's been a really hard time. Yeah. So our ministry was kind of on hold a bit during yeah, the war. Course. And yes, it wasn't because we were making deeper relationships with both Arabs and Jews because we didn't go back to England or mm -hmm. to Britain. Mm -hmm. We didn't go back to Britain. Yep. We stayed mm -hmm. during the war to support people. And that gained 
respect, you know, mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. people who thought we would we would go back. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I have to say, sadly, there's been a polarization now of Arabs and Jews because of the war. There's there's less trust generally mm-hmm. now between Arabs and separation. Jews. Separation. Separation. Mm-hmm. But we as Christians mm-hmm. are trying to keep them yeah, of course. together yeah. as one community, especially our friends, yeah. of course, yeah. and, and not to let them get fearful or extreme. Mm. Mm-hmm. And obviously, that's they need God very yeah. much. And yeah. the Christians who have God, we're just supporting them as well to keep mm-hmm. um, the balance and to be, uh, as as Jesus says, reconciliatory people, to yeah. reconcile in Jesus' name, mm-hmm. uh, both mm-hmm. Jew and Arab. So the ministry is quite tough at the moment. But, you know, it's quite, what's quite exciting is, um, I, I don't know whether you were going to mention this, but my wife, mm-hmm. Alison, has published a book yep. on trauma. Yep. She's a trauma expert because she listens to God as she count, yeah. counsels. She's a counsellor and she's published her first book on trauma, uh, which she's taken 11 characters from the Bible and written about how God heals them from their trauma during their life stories. And it's and it's really helping people. It's uh, it's a what, book from the, what, from what the Holy a, Spirit. Yeah, what, what an amazing yeah. foresight of God. Yeah, to yeah. actually lead Alison into that very yeah. thing at this time, and then a war starts. Yeah, I and mean, you, you couldn't make this stuff up. You, you know what I mean? Uh, but God is always that step ahead God all the knows. time. He knows. And he's he's just watching. Yeah, and saying, right, this is what I want you to do. And you you may think, well, I don't understand why. No. We don't need to understand yeah. why. All we've got yeah. to do is obey, trust yeah. and obey, uh, and then it all becomes clear. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just fantastic, the trauma work that mm-hmm. Alison's doing mm-hmm. counselling. She counsels 15 Israelis personally now, but also other people in various countries on WhatsApp. And it's so much needed, like you say. And after mm. the war, it's going to be needed. Oh, yeah, course. even more so. Yeah. So, yeah. and we really, it's just, I'm so proud of her that the trauma work is, mm-hmm. is really blossoming and god will use that as a, a way of starting our congregation we didn't realize that was happening but now we can see that's can see that's it, yeah. going to be a heartbeat of yeah. our congregation will be a place where people can come to feel safe mm-hmm. and to and to get healing yeah. from god through exactly. the counseling so we're, we're very excited yeah a couple of things there first yes. and foremost what is your organization called oh yes of course i haven't even yes. mentioned that Thanks, <laughs> so it's, okay. it's, it's called, <laughs> honestly I forget everything. It's called One Heart Israel. Mm. And we haven't got a website yet, but we will have a website. Yeah. And uh, that comes from Acts 4, where it says the early church, everybody was a one heart and soul. Yeah. Sharing everything, Beautiful. a real community. So yeah. One Heart Israel. And uh, we, we're just so excited to eventually start the congregation, which we're waiting on God. We're praying to God and just waiting and I'm keen to get going but God's holding me back a bit yeah. just hang on we'll do a bit more preparation this time is always perfect because George mm-hmm. I'm starting to learn Hebrew and Arabic and at, at the grand old age of 60 I keep forgetting all the words <laughs> George so and I know that you you spent some time learning yeah. Spanish in, in Ecuador and, yeah. and but yeah. you did very well I think so I'll get some it's, tips from you uh, yeah <laughs> listen it'll come it'll come there you go. where the Lord uh, leads I hope so he provides and I <laughs> That yes, includes language as well, believe me. Um, now, you, you spoke about the book. Yes. You've spoken about the yes. organisation. Yeah. Now, you don't have a website, but you do yeah. have contact details. Could we you do. give us the contact details, please? Um, I, I can't can remember we? them offhand. No matter, <laughs> we'll get them put in. You can worry. put them in later, because no, I don't no know more. the new no. address. We changed the address of, of, of uh, who to contact. I mean, I can, I can say... My email, if you like. Yeah, that's so we're fine. We're going to include that later. But if... no, we'll do that later. Oh, that's Don't great. worry, we'll, we'll, we'll put all these we'll things put all in. Those in later. So if you want to get the book, yeah. we'll, yes. we'll put in the explanations of yes. how you can get That's the book. Get yes. uh, if you want to support the yes. ministry, uh, we'll give you all the details yes. for that as well. Thank you. Uh, but you know, the most important thing is prayer. Amen. Isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, it's got to be, if, if we're on our knees... Uh, a lovely band called Petra from the States. Yes. And they wrote a song, Get On Your Knees and Fight Like a Man. Yes. And I think that is that is the truth, especially Very today. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't need to be just men, women, boys and girls as well. We can all, and if you don't can't get down physically on your yeah. knees, yeah. then we can do spiritually. Yes. Uh, and lift this wonderful couple up uh, in prayer. 
Uh, and I think we'll just do that to, to finish just off. Just before you do that, Lord. Okay. Lord, Lord. Just, <laughs> yeah. just before we pray to the Lord. Yeah. George, let me say also how, how much when I first met you, I was so moved and impressed by Scotland for Jesus, Jesus when you yeah, told me that you yeah. pray mm-hmm. unceasingly for Scotland and for lots of other things. Mm-hmm. I just I just knew that you were a man of prayer and that Joan as well was a yeah. was a woman of prayer and yeah. that this is a house of prayer. And it I, is. And it I is. want to say Scotland for Jesus is a wonderful ministry and you. that your house is a house where you can feel that there are prayers mm-hmm. and that the Holy Spirit is there. And that makes a difference. And like you said, prayer is everything. The gift that God gives us, one of the gifts, is prayer. Is we can pray to God. It's such a gift. And he listens. And even if we don't think anything's happening, it's happening. It's there. It's happening. And it may not happen for a while, but it is happening. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know that you're a man of prayer. Praise God. Let's just come before him. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again, O Lord, our God, as we would bow so humbly before your throne of grace. Father God, we acknowledge you and you alone as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, you are the Alpha and the beginning, at the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, and everything in between. Father, you are our Abba, mm. and we are your children. What? Wow, that, that just blows my mind, Lord, every time I think of it. Father God, we want to thank you indeed for everything that you are doing at this moment in time everything that you've already done and everything that you will do in the future. But Father, we want to bring Barry and Alison before you. Father, we give you thanks indeed for your hand uh, of healing on our dear brother Barry. Uh, Father, for the fact that your hands has been on them, both of them, three and a half years when they were separated. Uh, but you had that wonderful plan for them, Father. And you know, Lord, it, it comes down as well to the fact that they have been trusting in you. Uh, And Lord, you have continued on with them. You've now got Barry out to Israel. Uh, Father, the the church will come and it will be in your time and in your will. But we know, Father, you now have them where you need them, in there in Jerusalem. Uh, And we, we pray so earnestly, Father, that you would meet their every single need Everything that they need, Father, we know that you will provide for them. And Lord, that I know that that's the case, uh, whether it be financially or whether it be food or whatever they need. But also I know that you will put the people in their paths that you want them to speak to. And that through that, Lord, you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Lord, that's the, the scripture you gave us for here at Law Christian Fellowship. Yeah. I'm sure, Lord, that's the scripture you would give Barry and Alison. Yes. And we long, Lord, to hear. And eventually, Father, we long to see because we're desperate to go out there uh, and be yes. with these, yes. these, this lovely couple and see, physically see that church together. Yes. Arab and Jew yeah. worshipping Yeshua mm. together. What a day that will be. Mm. And Father, we will always, but always give you the praise, the honour and the glory in all things. But Father, bless them, please. Take care of them. Protect them, Father, and just bless them as only you can. For we do ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, that's us for tonight. And there we are. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and yours. Take care. God bless you. Jesus reached to touch him, for in a law that was forbidden, a leper was unclean. He'd always been an outcast, with no hope of returning. Now he could go back to his family, and not a blemish could be seen. He said, when you look at me, You're looking at a miracle For it's a wonder that I'm standing here today Everyone else said it was impossible But just one touch from Jesus And my whole world was changed There ain't no denying that it's true 
at me. You're looking at a miracle. His sins were washed away. He never really listened when someone shared the gospel. But in a moment of repentance, all eternity was changed. He said, when you look at me, you're looking at a miracle. For it's a wonder that I Why not download the free GCR app from Google Play Store or directly from the GCR website, genesischristianradio.org, or even listen on Alexa. Just say, Alexa, play GCR. GCR, Genesis Christian Radio.